you're passionate about your photography, the 77D is a great starting point to help you on your creative journey. In this video, we're going to have a deeper look at some of the features and functions of the camera and give you some tips and tricks to help you get more out of your camera. So let's get started. One of my favourite features in the 77D is the guided display. It helps to preempt what technical settings you might need to set in the camera to ensure a particular creative outcome. Initially, it's disabled in the camera, so let's navigate through that menu to get that enabled. Now we're in AV mode. AV mode is like a semi-automatic exposure mode. It enables us to pick the aperture while the camera controls the shutter speed based on the lighting around the camera. This is a great method or exposure mode to use when you want to be able to control your depth of field. To adjust the depth of field or the f-stop, use the main wheel dial. As you can see, as I change the f-stop, the camera gives me information about what that f-stop might be best suited for. For instance, f5.0 is great for more background blur. Let's do a little comparison. As you can see, I've set up a little composition in front of me and we're going to take two different shots, one with a shallow depth of field and one with a narrower f-stop, which will give us more detail. So as we change our f-stop, we should be able to see more and more detail creep into the scene. So the first photograph we took, we took at f-stop 5. We should see that the foreground is nice and sharp, but the details throughout the background are quite soft. This second exposure is taken at the other range of our f-stops. We've got a very narrow aperture and we should be able to see much more detail in the figurine space at the very end of the composition. As a photographer, I tend to manipulate my depth of field based on the creative outcome that I want. For instance, if I'm shooting a portrait and I want my subject to be nice and sharp, but I want to reduce the clutter and detail in the background, I might shoot with a shallow depth of field. So f5, f5.6, f3.5, and that'll enable me to keep my subject nice and sharp, but blur out uh, some of the distracting elements in the background or soften the background. As a landscape photographer, I would tend to shoot this at around f11, what that enables me to do is narrow down the f-stop and as a result I pull in more detail throughout the foreground, middle ground and background. The next exposure mode that I want to demonstrate for you is TV mode. It stands for time value and like AV it's a semi-automatic exposure mode. It allows us to pick the shutter speed while the camera keeps manipulating the aperture based on the light coming into the camera. For this next shot I've changed my subject matter. I've got a subject that has a little bit of movement. We'll take two shots, one where we freeze the motion of the movement and one where we capture that movement. That was shot at an 800th of a second, and if I look back at that image, the shutter open and closes fast enough to freeze any movement. This next shot, I've slowed the shutter speed right down. I'm shooting at a 10th of a second, and I anticipate there'll be a bit of motion blur in this shot. Now, if I review that, you can see that the base of the subject is perfectly still because it's not moving, but the top of my subject is bouncing around and the subject's blown out. This is a suitable shutter speed for faster moving subjects. Ensuring that we have sharp focus throughout all our images is critical. On the side of the lens, you'll notice that you have the option to shoot in manual focus or autofocus. I'm going to select autofocus. The camera also has the ability to manipulate the autofocus mode. You have three different operation menus within your autofocus. AI servo, AI focus, and one shot focus. I like to use one shot focus when my subjects are still, when they're not moving. And I find AI servo is great for when my subjects moving closer to or further away. Anticipate kids at play, sports and action, and wildlife when my subjects are radically moving. AI servo helps me better track that subject. You'll also notice that your camera has a number of focus points you can utilise. You can select to utilise one or several by changing the focus point you select or the zones. Your camera is also capable of capturing great video footage. To begin, we need to turn on video mode, which is right next to the on and off switch. To begin recording, simply press the camera button with the red dot just above it. While the camera is recording, you'll see that there's a red dot in the top right of the LCD screen. When you're done recording, press the same button. Your camera also has what's called video snapshot mode. It enables you to shoot short snapshots of video and then stitches them together in an album for you. So you can play back a video as a montage rather than needing to cut together a timeline. Let's navigate to that menu. We've enabled video snapshot mode, and as you can see, the videos are going to work off about four seconds, 
You can manipulate this depending on the length of the clip you'd like to capture. As we play back these clips, you'll notice that the camera stitches them together for you. In video mode, your camera also has built-in time-lapse functionality, which enables you to shoot a sequence of images and the camera will process them in camera for you, saving you needing to process them afterwards. Under auto exposure, I can manipulate how the camera records its exposures. If I want my exposure to be consistent throughout the frame, select fixed first frame. However, if I'm shooting a sunrise or sunset where the exposure changes, perhaps you want to expose for each frame. If you'd like greater control over your ability to edit your time-lapse photos, you'll find back in still modes, your camera has a built-in intervalometer. Once I've enabled the inbuilt intervalometer, I can control the number of shots captured as well as the interval. Setting your camera to zero, zero number of shots will also enable you to shoot an unlimited sequence. When you're setting up for a shoot, be sure to check the image quality. By default, your camera will be set to JPEG. If you'd like to also shoot in RAW, you can control this by either shooting a single RAW file or you also have the ability to shoot a RAW file plus a JPEG file. Capturing RAW footage is fantastic if you'd like to edit the photos. By having a RAW file, you've got a much larger file type and you have a little bit more flexibility in terms of how you edit that file. If you're only shooting JPEG, it's best to try and get as much right in camera rather than trying to edit it afterwards. When shooting in live view rather than through the viewfinder, there are a few functions that you can take advantage of to ensure that you get tack sharp shots and accurate focus. To establish live view, simply press this button. Within the menu, there are a number of ways which we can better control our focus. AF method will enable me to control the way my autofocus works in live view mode. Now all I have to do is touch the back of the LCD screen to get accurate focus. If I want to further check that my focus is nice and sharp, I can use the magnifying glasses as well. This enables me to ensure tack sharp focus. This is super helpful for things like macro photography. When in playback, I can use the same magnifying buttons to zoom in on detail. Utilising the camera's inbuilt picture styles is a great way to manipulate the look and feel of your images. It allows you to add almost like a filter to the file that you're capturing. For instance, if I wanted to capture this image as a monochrome file, by activating my picture style, I have greater control. Just be mindful that if you're shooting in a JPEG file, you won't be able to revert back to the colour file when captured in monochrome. It's a great idea to shoot RAW and JPEG just in case if you're working in a black and white picture style. White balance is also another frequently used setting. White balance measures the temperature of light. If you've ever captured a photograph that's got a blue cast or a yellow cast to it, perhaps you've captured the image in the wrong white balance. To set your white balance, there's a designated button on the back of the camera. Typically what I'll do is consider the light that I'm shooting under and find the icon that best matches that preset. When shooting with the wrong white balance, you can see that you get a color cast. If you've ever needed to set up high speed burst shooting or timers within your camera, just hit the drive button on the back of the camera. Your camera is capable of shooting up to six frames per second, which is great for capturing fast movement and speed. Your camera also has a number of built-in timers. Great for putting yourself in the picture or for when you need to shoot hands-free. I hope this has helped you get a little bit more familiar with your 77D. Now it's time for you to get out there and practice. Thank you.